Hey, this is Kev with Blender Bits. In this video, we're going to be going over basic animation. Ready? Let's go. Animating is pretty easy. Well, okay, no, it's not pretty easy. It actually gets really complex when you start going into things like character animation and motion graphics. But for right now, actually animating something in Blender is pretty easy to do. But there are a few little things that you have to set up before you start animating. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sphere. And I'm going to move the sphere over here. Now, if you look at the bottom of the screen, where my mouse is, you see there's a timeline. Okay, it goes from 0 to 250. Okay, and you can see here, start frame 1, end time 250. You can specify how many frames you want. Uh, and, a, and a frame is just one unit of time. Okay, so in this case, I believe I'm set up for 24 frames a second. And uh, so if I went to 250 and I type in 24 and I hit enter, okay, now I have 24 frames. Okay, and I can middle mouse, button, and drag. Okay, and you can see there's 24 frames. And if I scroll, use the scroll wheel out, you can see here that each frame is well kind of represented here all right now this is what you animate on primarily so to animate all we're going to do is we're going to go down here to this little key thing okay and we click the key and i'm going to choose loc rote scale which is location rotation and scale there are lots of other things you can animate here um, but I'm just going to animate these three, what are called channels. Location is a channel, rotation is a channel, and scale is a channel. And within those you have X, Y, and Z coordinate channels. But I'm not, that's, that's too much. I'm not going to confuse you right now. So choose loc rote scale. And what we're going to do, okay, we're on frame one. This little blue tick shows that we're on frame one. We're going to hit this little key button. Boom. What that did is it puts this little yellow tick mark here. That tells you that there is information at frame one. So it's telling you the location, the rotation, and the scale of this particular object that's selected is keyframed at frame one. So if I right click on frame 24, no sorry, left click, left click on frame 24, and I move this guy over here, Okay, and I go ahead and I hit this keyframe again, this key key button, boom. Now it's telling the computer that you want this object to be here at frame 24. So if I hit the play button now, the little play button, you can see it moves between this location and this location. That's called setting keyframes, and you'll see that the computer actually draws all the frames that are in between. These are called in between frames. Okay, so if you left click and drag, you can see that on each one of these, your ball is moving at a different position at each frame. Okay, so I can go in, say, frame 12 in the middle, and I can bring this guy up, and I hit the keyframe again, this key, key button. Now, I have this happen. Rant, rant, rant. If I hit play, you'll see it automatically plays it. All right. And I can go in anywhere else and hit key again. Now it goes. Rant. All right. Move this here. Hit the key again. Okay. So now I have this kind of jumpy thing. Boing, boing. All right, so you're asking, well, do I always have to hit this key button? Uh, it helps keep it organized, and it depends on your own workflow. But there is a little button here you can hit called automatic keyframe insertion. <laughs> and in the industry, we kind of joke, too, that this is sometimes called auto scene destroy. But you can turn this on, and now wherever you want to move, say you, you go between frame, I don't know, 7 and frame 12 at frame 10, and you pull this guy over here, okay? It'll automatically set a keyframe for you. This is great when you know what you're doing and you're, you're highly organized in your scene, but it kind of 
kind of can uh, make things a little bit crazy when you start moving things around and you have a lot going on in your scene that you start making a big mess of things. But that's okay. It, it, it's your workflow. So whatever is more comfortable for you, get used to that and, and you'll you'll definitely figure out what's best for you. Okay. And if you want to Say you want to uh, delete a keyframe, okay? Say you did mess up, okay? And I, I don't want 10. I can just go here on this keyframe, or I can use these little, uh, these um, kind of fast forward buttons to jump to a uh, jump to a new keyframe, jump to the next keyframe or the previous keyframe. And if I don't want it, say I don't want 10, I just hit this little key with a slash through it. Boom, gets rid of it. So now it snaps back there and it won't be there anymore. So now I can get rid of 16 as well. I can get rid of, I don't know, I just get rid of all the ones in the middle, okay, boom, get one of the ones in the middle, and I'm back to this. That's the basics of keyframing. And the cool thing is, because we chose location, rotation, and scale, I can say at 12, if I want to, I can scale the object. So I'll go to Tools, I'll go to Scale, and I'll bring it down. And because I don't have auto, oh, I do have auto keyframing on. So now you'll see that big, small, big. Or you take this and make it even bigger. So scale, and I'll make it big. Boom. So now you see if I hit play. Whoa. Okay, so it's keying the scale and the location. You can also rotate. So now you'll see, because I still have auto keyframe on, okay, that it rotates. And I'll show you slower so you can see it's rotating and rotating back to its original position. See that? So go ahead, play with this, okay, watch a video a few times if this doesn't make sense, and play with it. This is the very basics of keyframing. In, in later videos on animation, I'm going to go into what's called a function editor and start showing you curves and all sorts of cool stuff that you can use to change the motion of this. But for now, this is the basics. Just go ahead, play with it. And if you have questions, comment section is open. Leave comments. And if you got anything out of this video, hit like, subscribe, and I'll definitely keep making more. All right, thanks. Bye.